just congratulate you for buying a Skylark. Thank you. <laughs> I think you're going to have a lot of fun with it. Uh, and these two guitars were the, the two main guitars I used also. Um, we can begin with the on-off switch. This one's a little bit different for us. It combines the on-off power with the standby switch. So the middle position, and we'll show you a picture, middle position is off. When you bring it down or toward the front of the amp, that energizes the filaments of the tubes, lets them warm up. And after about a minute, you flick it forward or back to the play position, and you're ready to go. Now, uh, a lot of people wonder, standby switch, why would I use that? Uh, the filament needs to warm up the cathode of the tube uh, to the point where it's hot enough to let electrons bubble off, and then you're ready to go. And if you let the tubes warm up before you engage the high voltage, which is taking it off standby, uh, the tubes will last longer. That's the, that's the simple simple truth there. Okay, and we've got on the top panel of the amp, it's pretty straightforward, volume, treble, middle, bass, kind of your standard passive tone stack there. With one exception, the mid control has a lot of range. So for example, if you take the mids all the way out, it can be fairly scooped. That's a fun sound, especially if you bring up the treble and the bass a bit. In the reverb, you get kind of a neat hollow. Sound. I'm just going to bring the mids back up to halfway and bass and treble back to half. That's a good, just solid, regular tone. And the mids on the Skylark, you can take the mids much further than any of our amps. So it's, you can hear it start to break up. It's a little bit barky, maybe it has a little bit of a tweed vibe. So that's kind of fun. That's a bit different with this. Uh, the other thing on the Skylark, it has a high-low gain switch. Now this switch isn't high-high gain. It's, it's more of a laid-back, black face kind of sound, uh, very pretty, mellow, which is what we're in right now. Or, when you engage that switch, it's a bit brighter. Here's the... difference, especially when you get the volume cranked up. I've got the volume pretty low right now. And that comes into play with the other great feature that we've got, which is a built-in attenuator. So again, with the, um, the thinking of an at-home amp, this amp makes 12 watts, which is plenty to play live with a drummer. I've done it uh, many times. Um, but to engage, there's a little switch here, you engage the uh, attenuator, now you're down to 1.2 watt, which may sound like not, not much power, but it, it is. Here I'm going to turn the volume up from about 9 o'clock to half. And suddenly I'm... That's pretty loud in a home setting. This is, And it'll get louder too. And that's when you might bring the, the attenuator down further. To, uh, you know, just really low. And you can get nice... Um, just starting to break up. Sounds... Nice way to give you more control 
And an important thing to remember about the reverb is where you have your volume setting on the amp, um, that is the volume that drives the tank. So if the volume is very low, you have to turn up the reverb more to get the same amount of reverb as you would if the volume was high because the tank's being driven harder. It comes after the volume control. For the first time in any of our amps, we've got a presence control. Um, and it's somewhat confusing to explain what presence control does. Uh, there's a circuit called negative feedback, which is in many amps, all the blackface, marshals, and this takes some of the output signal, at the speaker actually, after the output transformer, and blends it back in out of phase to the phase inverter. Uh, the reason why you do this is it, it kind of gives the amp a reference of what's going on after it gets through the power stage and tries to correct it. It's, it's a corrective feedback loop, and it lowers gain in the output section, uh, but really adds a lot of control on the low end. A uh, possible negative thing though in the top end with too much feedback is it, it sounds very closed uh, and not very natural. Uh, the presence control allows you to uh, take the high frequencies and remove them from that negative feedback loop. And that makes high end go up because they're not being kind of tamped down or controlled anymore. So it's a great way to get both the tight base of a fair amount of feedback and the control, especially in distortion, while allowing you to have uh, sparkle and shimmer and openness. You know, the Skylark, the fun thing when I was messing with this, this circuit is very similar to the oldest basements, uh, but we've extended the range of it. In other words, you can, you can go much further, it can get much brighter, and it can also get much more controlled and dark. And uh, dark's the wrong word, but, but more um, just, just kind of pretty and jazzy in a way. So anyway, um, oh, and that swoosh sound, that, that means you know it's working. Don't be alarmed. That's good. So here we have the, feet, uh, the presence off, which is maximum feedback at all frequencies. And then at halfway, which is a great kind of all-around sound, you're getting some uh, shimmer. Take it further for more, more bite, more bite in the top end. You may want to do that with a dark guitar and neck pickup, or if you just want to really cut. So the presence is pretty fun, and it allows you to essentially change the whole top end character of the amp because it's working on the output section, the power tubes, and the speaker, and the output transformer. The old basements had this. Uh, right. <laughs> I've had a few people ask by email uh, in reference to the attenuator if it's active all the time and it's not. It has a toggle switch so when it's not engaged it's a hundred percent out of the circuit. It's as, it's as if it's not even in the amp so you're just straight in. And then when you want to bring it in you just hit the toggle switch and engage it. Skylark uses a new speaker by Celestium called the A-Type which is their great effort at getting the American sound while retaining the kind of vibe that they have, which is a nice, there's a nice compression to the Celestian speakers, uh, while giving us some sparkle and a, a good mid-scoop like you find in a Jensen. So this A-type speaker works really well in this amp. Uh, another nice thing about it, which is uh, separate from sound, is that it uses a smaller magnet, which is lighter. It just, it's nicer to move around. The Sam Thompson is just about 40 pounds, just a 